Let's take a deep dive into the eerie and paranormal cases of Ed and Lorraine Warren. They are known for having a gift of being able to communicate with the dead, and have been involved in a number of real-life haunting and exorcism cases. Today, I'm going to show you some lost footage from Ed and Lorraine Warren. Viewer discretion is advised. Starting off this countdown, we have Scotland's underground city. In 1996, Ed and Lorraine Warren visited Edinburgh in Scottsdale to investigate an underground city that was said to be haunted. In this video, you see an older tour guide talking about the underground city and teaching Lorraine about the history. Right, now this, this is one of the shops. The cross run from the high street right down there. All down the right hand side, there were shops and businesses. This is one of them. This was a wine shop. There used to be underground shops there and stuff. And at one point, he talked about getting bad vibes from being down there. And apparently, Lorraine was sensing this as well. So that's when you get the funny feeling. Mm, I got funny feeling, all right. A very bad feeling. It gets worse when he talks about how everyone died down there and there were just piles of bodies being there because no one could get rid of them. And after the day, the close here started to die off with the plague, one by one. As they died off, they were just carried from the houses here up to the top of the close where the high street is and dumped on a car and taken away to the plague pits. Which is probably why the place is haunted. I mean, so many people die down there and their spirits are trapped down there because they didn't get a proper burial. Well, at one point in the video, Lorraine claims that she hears the ghost walking by. She then started to feel another presence was there. It feels like somebody is like squeezing your insides all together, actually. Squeezing the life right out of you. It just blows my mind how calm she is when she's fully like, yep, there's a ghost with us right now. Oh yeah, I just heard a ghost. Oh yeah, a ghost just walked by. Like what? Lorraine? <laughs> In our next spot, we have the photographic evidence of ghosts. In this footage, you see Ed and Lorraine Warren discussing a number of cases where they caught photographic evidence of ghosts. The first case that they talk about revolves a woman named Gail Martin. Basically, Gail moved into a house and for the longest time, nothing spooky happened. Then one day, she was digging in her backyard when she was gardening. Her husband took a photo of her doing so and when it developed, you could see a white silhouette of a ghost. Now, you see that Gail is higher than that woman. Gail is, is on a pile of dirt. Mm -hmm. She's up and she is digging and the woman is looking down at her. Then we have a second photo taken of Gail that same day. And then again, you could see a ghost in the shot. That, that was taken just moments after the first one. And Gail is smiling because her husband is saying something funny. The woman is smiling and she puts her hand up to her mouth in that manner. These are two exceptionally remarkable sight And she looks like an elderly woman who would dress that way. They used to put the uh, housecoats house coat over their on. dressing yeah. gown, yes. Now, unfortunately, since it is old footage, it's super hard to see clearly in the photo. Now, Lorraine actually made contact with this ghost, and that's when we learned more about her story. The house that Gail is living in we believe is the house that that woman built for her son, who was a doctor, for him to use as a piece of summer property to get away from his hectic practice in New York. According to Lorraine, the woman in the photograph once had a child who she loved. She even built a place for him on her property for him to stay, so he was always close to her. And she idolized mm. this man, it was her only child. That summer, he was working at a children's camp and he contracted polio. So this one summer, during the polio epidemic, he <clears throat> was at a children's camp when he contacted polio and died three days later. It was during the midst of the polio epidemic. Three days later, he sadly passed away. The mother was extremely heartbroken. You can imagine how tragic that had to be for his mother. And that in itself, tragedies create the ghost syndrome. So when she passed away, she attached herself to the piece of land. And that in itself would cause her to remain there, but she probably didn't show herself. So if you had to guess, Lorraine, you would, you would guess that that is the mother of that doctor? Yes. 
Yes. When Gail started gardening, you know, it disrupted some things, and that's when the ghost made herself seen. Moving on down, we have the Buddhist exorcism. In the early 2000s, the Warrens took a trip to Japan to check out some haunted tunnels. Apparently, a number of people died in these tunnels, so they were sent to go check them out. But while they were there, they were actually contacted to perform an exorcism as well. This was on a woman named Teresa. Now, this footage is very creepy because not only is it footage of a woman that is possessed, but because you can actually, like, hear the demon in her voice. Teresa, you hear me? Teresa, you hear me? You understand me? Teresa, leave. Leave, Teresa. Lorraine is, you know, talking to Teresa, telling her to fight back against the demon that's inside of her, controlling her. Leave, dear, leave. I'm here to help you. Things take a turn when Teresa starts speaking in English to Lorraine. Teresa doesn't speak English. She's talking English, Ed. See, your mother? Go with your mother, Teresa. Go with your mother. Go with your mother. Go with your mother. your mother. So clearly, this was the demon communicating with Lorraine. Towards the end of the exorcism, Teresa starts lashing out towards Lorraine and others. She is crawling around, growling like a demon, and talking in a raspy voice. <laughs> The footage ends with Lorraine once again telling Teresa to fight back against the demon. We don't know if this exorcism was actually successful, but I don't think it was. Next, we have the cursed objects. Now let's head on down to the Warren's Occult Museum, shall we? In this interview, Ed is seen talking about how dangerous their museum actually is. It shouldn't be a museum, actually. Not gonna lie. It's the most haunted area in the world. That's what I would say. I would say that it is one of the most wanted areas because of the many things here, Tony. These are all things that you then would consider evil, Ed? Oh, positively. He also tells stories of people that have died or have been severely injured after fooling around in their museum. Again, shouldn't be a museum then, open to the public. In fact, this is not a building that you should be in after 9 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. uh, from 9 to 6 are the psychic hours. Many of the objects in this room here have had dire effects on people. People have been maimed, have been killed. People have wound up in mental institutions because of many of the things that are right in this building here. Now, the Warrens had a strict set of rules. They told visitors not to touch anything whatsoever. This is because their aura then mingles with the object's aura and it can easily latch onto you. If anybody touches anything in this room, their aura mingles with the aura of that object. Mm -hmm. which is very evil. You know, next thing you know, you're bringing a demon home with you or it's possessing you. That's happened. In fact, when they were filming this, the spirits were apparently angry. According to Tony Spiro, when he arrived with the camera crew, the spirits were upset and decided to shut off all the lights on them and to tell them this. We were starting to film, you mean, just as Rob was coming to us to start the interview, every single light went out. Every single light went out without any kind of jolting, just died. That was a warning to get out of here. Isn't that creepy? Like, the way that Ed says that is so terrifying. Like, the demons want you gone. Leave. And in our final spot today, we have Beelzebub. What I'm about to show you is an unseen exorcism that was filmed by Ed and Lorraine Warren. In the video, we see Tony and Lorraine Warren performing an exorcism on a man named Roberto. This is the power. Jesus Christ. Okay. You hear me? Jesus Christ has all the power. You have none. What is your name? So in the video, as you just saw, they're trying to find out the demon's name so that they can then expel it out of his body. And you're not gonna believe what demon is actually inside of him. What is your name? Jesus Christ commands you to answer that question. What is your what name? What is your name? Beelzebub. Beelzebub? Is that what you're saying? Beelzebub? He is possessed by none other than Beelzebub. In Christian texts, the name Beelzebub is often associated with the devil himself. They would alternate between using this name and Satan. He is considered one of the seven princes of hell, and he is associated with the sin of gluttony. In other texts, he is described as the lieutenant of hell, second in power, to Satan. The thing is, he wasn't just possessed by Beelzebub, but a number of other demons as well. What other entities inside you? God is commanding you. In the name of Jesus Christ. What is it? Abaddon. 
Time to die. Okay, who else? Who else is within you? The video went on and they found that at least four demons were inside of him. They then decided to ask the demons why they were possessing Roberto, like why him? And they replied with, for power. Why are you in Roberto? Why are you there with Roberto? Ugh, that is absolutely creepy. I hate that. So crazy. But that's all, folks. If you haven't seen part one, then make sure you check it out. I'll have it linked below up here. And if you want to see part three, then also let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, comment your thoughts on anything. Do you believe in ghosts or the supernatural? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure that you don't forget to smash that like button. Obviously, subscribe to my channel. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan. Stick around for some bloopers if there is any, and I'll show you when I show you. Bye. In 1996, Ed and Lorraine Warren visited Ed and... Edinburgh, 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 <coughs> type code. Oh, I wasn't doing f In this, it, in this interview. Anyways, this is the process. Mm, whoops.